Today I'm going to show you an easy, low-cost way to make a tasty unagi don using eggplant. So stick around. Unagi means eel in Japanese, so unadon is usually made with unagi kabayaki over rice. But there's a different dish called nasu no kabayaki, or eggplant kabayaki, that has a similar taste and texture. And with a little bit of creative knife work, you can even make it look like unagi. With creamy eggplant glazed in sweet and savory unagi sauce, this plant-based unagi dong is ultra satisfying. But to take it up a notch, I've served it over a bowl of high-protein rice made with tofu and sesame seeds. So let's start with a look at our ingredients. For the eggplant, I'm using two large Japanese eggplants, but 375 grams of other varieties without many seeds like Chinese or Italian will work. I've also got two tablespoons of vegetable oil, a quarter cup sake, two tablespoons soy sauce, two tablespoons sugar, and some scallions for garnish. For the rice, I have one rice cooker cup of short grain rice, 150 grams of firm tofu, and two tablespoons of toasted sesame seeds. To prepare the rice, I'm going to start by washing it under cold water, agitating it with my hand until the water runs mostly clear. Then I'm going to dump this into the bowl of my rice cooker and add water to just below the one cup marker. This is because the tofu is going to release some water as it cooks. For the tofu, I've got a clean cotton cloth set over a bowl and I'm going to break up the block of tofu into it. Then I'm going to gather up the corners of the cloth and wring out as much water from the tofu as I can. This helps to keep the rice from getting mushy. Now I'm going to dump the squeezed tofu into the rice. And then I'm going to grind up the sesame seeds using a mortar and pestle. You can also use a clean spice grinder, food processor, or blender to do this. Once it's looking like this, let's go ahead and add it to our rice. Now I'm going to mix this together while breaking up the tofu. Eggplant doesn't have much protein, so adding tofu and sesame seeds makes the dish more balanced and the sesame seeds add a wonderful flavor to the rice. Okay, let's pop this into the rice cooker and let it do its thing. Next, I'm going to chop up our scallions to use as a garnish. We have these really thin scallions called banno negi here in Japan, but if the scallions in your country are too thick, you can mince them up, or you can use chives instead. To prepare the eggplant, I'm going to start by trimming the ends off of them. Next, I'm going to slice each eggplant in half lengthwise. Then I'm going to cut a slit down the middle of each half, about two-thirds of the way through. Finally, I'm going to add some shallow scoring down the length of the eggplant. This not only helps it absorb the sauce better, it also gives it an appearance that more closely resembles unagi when it's done. To fry these up, I'm going to add some oil to a frying pan over medium-high heat, and then I'm going to add the eggplant with the cut side facing down. This may seem like a lot of oil, but unagi gets its rich, creamy texture from its fat content, and the oil imparts a similar texture to our eggplant while helping it to brown. At this point, I'm going to give the eggplant a few presses with a stiff spatula to ensure the cut surface is making good contact with the pan. Otherwise, it's not going to brown evenly. Okay, these have been frying for about 3 minutes now, and they should be nice and browned, so I'm going to go ahead and flip them over. Then I'm going to add the sake, soy sauce, and sugar. When you add the sugar, make sure to get it into the sauce and not on top of the eggplant. I'm going to cover this with a lid and let the eggplant steam for 4 minutes. You want the sauce to be at a full simmer, but if your heat is up too high, all of the liquid is going to evaporate and it's going to start burning, so adjust the temperature of your stove accordingly. Once the timer is up, you want to flip the eggplant over so the cut surface is facing down. 
Just be careful about the amount of liquid in the pan and add water if necessary so it doesn't burn. Then I'm gonna cover it back up and let it continue steaming until the eggplant is tender. This should take another four to six minutes. Okay, the eggplant should be done, so let's have a look. Beautiful, isn't it? And it smells amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the rest of these over and then I'm gonna transfer them to a heat-proof rack set over a metal tray. Then I'm gonna use a brush to glaze the eggplant in the kabayaki sauce, which should be nice and thick. If your sauce is too watery, you can reduce it some more on the stove. Now I'm gonna torch it to caramelize the glaze. Before we finish off our eggplant, I want to thank Musubi Kiln for sending us the donburi and condiment plate I used in this video. They have a huge selection of Japanese tableware from traditional to modern, and they ship worldwide. Also, if you use coupon code NORECIPES, you not only get 5% off your order, you also help to support this channel. So hit the link in the description down below to check them out. Most kitchen torches have two adjustments. One sets the amount of gas being discharged, while the other adjusts the air-fuel mixture. Once the torch is ignited, be sure to adjust the air-fuel mixture until you see a tight blue cone in the center of your flame. This ensures you're burning all the fuel so your food doesn't end up tasting like gas. To torch the eggplant, just keep the flame moving back and forth until the glaze is thick and bubbly and the eggplant is lightly charred. You can also do this in an oven or a toaster oven set to broil if you don't have a torch. Okay, it's time to put this together, so let's open up the rice and stir it all together. It smells so nutty and delicious and it's gonna go great with our makunagi. Let's get some rice into our donburi. And then I'm gonna top it with our eggplant kabayaki. Garnish this with a pinch of scallions. And our vegan unagidon is done! Oh man, this smells so good. It's that savory, sweet kabayaki sauce. All right, let's dig in here. Itadakimasu. Oh, the eggplant is so tender. I can just pull it apart with my chopsticks here. And let's go for a bite of this. Mmm. By pan frying it with some of that oil, it's picked it up and made the eggplant super creamy. And that kabayaki sauce, the sweet and savory soy sauce with the sugar and the sake, it's such a great combination. Oh. And with the rice, that combination of that nutty sesame with the creamy tofu adds some body, which gives it like a really meaty, satisfying texture. Oh, that's so delicious. I hope you guys give this a try. By the way, this vegan unagidon is also delicious at room temperature, which makes it perfect for packing into a bento box lunch. As always, let me know if you enjoyed this video by giving this a big thumbs up, and don't forget to share this with all your friends that could use an easy alternative to unagi. All right, I'm gonna go sit down and enjoy the rest of this, but check out this playlist for more plant-based recipes, and I'll catch you in the next one.